How in the hell could a man enjoy being awakened at 8:30 a.m. by an alarm clock, leap out of bed, piss, shit, brush teeth, dress, brush hair, force feed, and fight traffic to get to a place where essentially you made lots of money for somebody else and were asked to be grateful for the opportunity to do so? I have found what Charles Bukowski said incredibly relatable. They call it 9 to 5. It's never 9 to 5. After every trip to the mountains, I returned physically to my office desk on Monday while my soul stayed back in the mountains. Hi, I am Raghav and today's video is about my why. Why I quit my job and why I quit the city. After working 3 years in a corporate job, I just knew I had to go. Where how I did not know. I just had a strong why and a belief that I will find my way. This is me reading The Crossroads of Should and Must by L Luna on the beautiful beach of Agonda in Goa. As L Luna puts it, there are two paths in life, should and must. We arrive at this crossroads over and over again, and each time we get to choose. After graduating from my architecture college in 2016, I was at one such crossroad of what I should do and what I must do. I told my dad about the idea of going to a remote village and working for the people and use my whatever limited powers as designers for good. But what he said, I will never forget. He said you cannot feed others with an empty stomach and you should take a job first and earn some money for i got my first job offer from a corporate firm in amdabad it is a city where i was born and i was never fond of so another dear friend who also got into the same office he somehow convinced me to join and his convincing statements were that raghav you should think about you will be spending most of the time in the office and not in the city i will never forget my first day i dressed in white crisp shirt polished my brown shoes wore a khaki colored linen pants and as i dressed i was dancing to the song from sr ki movie called love you baby i was the first one to reach the office on time even though it was my first day i worked till late hours not because someone asked me to but i found the work very fascinating Also I believed in architecture working late hours was seen as wearing a badge of honor I started to enjoy my time in the office I had the coolest boss one of the best work cultures for an architecture studio in India excellent camaraderie among the 15 odd colleagues my life outside the office was mostly restricted to weekends but was not boring friday evening for events attending stand up comedy music concerts or sometimes catching a play saturday mornings for football and saturday nights for house parties sunday mornings for running followed by heavy brunches and sunday evening for reunions with my childhood school friends i was already bitten by the travel bug during my internship in germany i backpacked to more than 6 countries during my time in europe Now within the comfort of my meager salary I wanted to backpack in India I was referred to as travel kumar I almost traveled to more than 18 cities in a year my travels ranged from attending music festivals to going for a solo trip to the head hunters village in Longwa at the far east border of India and Myanmar in Nagaland So there was no plan to climb the corporate ladder. Everything seemed perfect. I was doing good work, I was getting to travel. 
it just felt like i was moving in the right direction until it didn't the work pressure increased i had bigger responsibility there were more projects on my plate i was handling clients i was doing acquisition presentations and on top of this i took up freelance projects on the weekends to fund my travels i think i just bit more than i could chew travel was the only cheese that i always kept in front of me to get me through the week or sometimes months of grind I often found myself leaving a piece of my heart in the Himalayan mountains, the serene lake of Pushkar, or the beautiful beaches of Goa, only to return feeling empty on Monday mornings. I wished, what if I had the freedom to stay one more day? I knew something was missing. Something was wrong. This can't be it. There must be more to life. Sometimes in the middle of the day, I just paused. I looked around to the people glued to their screens and I wondered am I the only one who wants to escape this rat race During one of our lunch table conversations my HR now a dear friend a dreamer and an artist introduced me to a page called niche on Instagram a sort of newsletter sharing quotes offering glimpses into the thoughts of a diverse group of remarkable individuals such as Bukowski, Bob Dylan, Henry Miller, Krishna Murthy, Frida Kahlo, Anais Nin and exploring the viewpoints of individuals who have achieved success in life gave me what i needed most perspective among the many thoughts the one that resonated with me the most was that of Bukowski's rant against the 9 to 5 grind He talks about how they never pay the slaves enough so they can get free and how the people simply empty out. After reading him, the free booze and pizzas, the office trips and a modest increase in my salary did not seem so amusing. Please don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for my time at the corporate firm and for the opportunity. I think it had one of the best work cultures. I still love my boss. and i know he loves me too i even found a loving partner i am proud of the work that i accomplished in 3 years i met people who i can call friends for life but i was just frustrated with the overall system which just saw you as a human resource i also started to question my impact as an architect on the planet I saw there was so much disconnect between this elite architect who sits in the office from nine to five and makes these drawings, versus the labor who puts the hard work to make your dream into a reality. Naval Ravikan says, "Be careful what you read, because just as songs that get stuck into your mind, in the same way your thoughts can get stuck in the same loop." He also says that. a taste of freedom can make you unemployable for me the song that got stuck in my mind was to escape the rat race next morning another bukowski niche post read there is a light somewhere it may not be much light but it beats the darkness i know that i was in prison and i needed to find a way out and look for the light a year passed me talking about just wanting to quit my job i was maybe waiting for someone to come and rescue me from my misery but then one day i read this quote from mel robbins there's no one coming to save you and there's no one who will give you permission to dream be or to grow in that one year i was trying to gather courage to quit my job and i did not want to leave the project that i had started from scratch it was like my baby maybe a crying baby that did not let me sleep jack kerouac said because in the end you won't remember the time you spent working in the office or mowing your lawn climb that goddamn mountain so i decided to give myself 6 months before i quit my job like the 4 hour work week by Tim Ferriss 
became a magic portal fuel to my fire i also watched documentaries such as the minimalism social dilemma and watch youtube channels like living big in a tiny the coming weekend i sat down in a park with my favorite uniball black pen and a newly bought diary to draft a plan inspired by the likes of rolf potts shivya nath and nomadic mat the plan was to start a blog and travel south east asia i worked backwards on how much money i would need until i built a side hustle i deleted all my food delivery apps and stopped going to events i started cooking myself to save as much money as possible i started working on our blog with my brother ranj on the weekends it was called tiny af i booked my ticket to vietnam and also got accepted as a volunteer in the bali spirit festival this is me giving my farewell speech I think thanks to everyone here. Like it was a perfect environment that everybody could get like in the architecture office. And now Dobby was a free elf. Next morning, I left for Goa with a backpack, three years of memories, colleagues I could call friends for life, and of course, a salt and pepper look. I will always remember this Goa trip. I truly tasted what freedom looks like. After the Goa trip I worked on my blog and I was counting the days until my dream trip to Southeast Asia took flight. But just a day before the trip our PM Modi announced a complete lockdown due to Covid. Dhyan se suniye. Pure desh mein aaj raat 12 baje se sampurn desh mein संपूर्ण लॉकडाउन होने जा रहा है माई ड्रीम लाइफ क्रैश इवन बिफोर टेकिंग फ्लाइट आई वॉज डिसअपॉइंटेड बट देर वॉज नो वे टू गो सो आई गॉट बैक टू रीडिंग बुक्स एंड वॉचिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज आई वॉच मूवी सच एज द कैप्टन फिंटेस्टिक द बिगेस्ट लिटिल फार्म लिविंग द चेंज एंड द इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ हैप्पीनेस and read books like the city quitters the mud ball and the walden these books and movies made me realize some important things about life and myself i was the kind of person who did not even know what a tomato plant looked like but i knew this much that the food we eat is poisoned with fertilizers the air we breathe is polluted Even though we lived in a area which was comparatively closer to nature, but I wasn't engaging actively with nature. Novel Ravikant talks about three major decisions that you make in early life: one, where you live; two, who you are with; and three, what you do. For me, I knew I could not live my whole life in the cities. I decided it was time to quit. We moved to the rural pastures to live deliberately and consciously. We wanted to be closer to nature and also engage with nature. We wanted to celebrate our human potential, explore our authentic selves and create something sacred with our own hands. If you are curious how we quit the city, please watch our first video on how we moved to the mountains. I am aware When I share my story that I am coming from a place of privilege and unfair advantages that not everyone has but I am still sharing my story with empathy and humility recognizing that everyone's journey is unique it's important to understand that there is no one size fits all answer or a clear path for everyone we each need to find our own way and figure things out as we go along The path after quitting the job and the city has been full of discomforts and uncertainties but I still feel that these two decisions have been the most rewarding decisions of my life. I want to end my monologue by quoting a stanza from Robert Frost's poem The Road Not Taken. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverge in a wood and I I took the one less travel by and that has made all the difference.